Hey, Sooner Football fans. This is your Sooner Football Fans podcast. You got Terry and Rob here. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. And we are coming at you from the home of the Big 12. Six time. Six time. Back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Big 12 champions. Big 12 champions in the podcast palace in beautiful Norman, Oklahoma. Where we are not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma. But we do have eligibility left. That's right. We got a great podcast coming up for you. Going to talk about the Big 12 game. Going to talk about the Florida Gators and the Cotton Bowl. Um, but first, want to give a shout out to Toby Rowland. We are running our contest. Um, if you go on to Twitter and find our tweet uh, that says, Retweet if hearing T Row unhitch the wagon calls give you goosebumps. To be in the drawing for a personally inscribed autograph copy of his book. Unhitch the Wagons, the story of Boomer and Sooner. Personally inscribed. Personally inscribed. So um, right now we have 34 entries and 111 likes. I think some people thought, well, if I like it. No, nope, you got to retweet gotta it. Got to retweet it. Got to retweet it. And, and and I don't have a chance. Is that what you're telling me? Well, you can retweet it, you know. And I got a chance? Yeah, you got a chance. Not a very good one. You've uh, heard of a snowball in a warm spot, haven't you? Oh, my gosh. So. Uh, but also, we want to give a shout out to the Sooner Club of Atlanta. They've been um, sending us some stuff, and we're going to help them out uh, with some things here uh, coming up. We're going to come down and visit, too. Yeah, sure. We love Atlanta. <laughs> um, let me find my little uh, message board here. Um, you can go check them out. I want to put stuff out. Um, uh, they have a site. Uh, they raise money and give out scholarships uh, to uh, kids in Georgia who are coming to the University of Oklahoma. And how they raise money is from donations and um, their watch parties. Well, guess what? With COVID this year. No watch parties. No watch parties. Uh, last year, they did 11 scholarships. Wow. Uh, for kids. Really? Uh, and they're going to be lucky to do one oh this year. Oh, my gosh. So uh, they got some pretty cool uh, shirts out there, um, uh, the ATL4OU shirts. It's a Georgia license plate that says ATL4OU's got the peach on it. Cool. Um, but they could sure use uh, some support to help get some more kids' scholarships to get to the University of Oklahoma. I don't know all about their scholarships, but um, – They're out of state tuition is no joke, yeah, so and yeah, I'm sure they need some help. Every little dime counts, mm -hmm. so – uh, but a shout out to them. They've been talking to us about trying to help them out. Um, so, um, you know, may be able to find a donation site or go purchase one of those cool looking shirts. Hey, even though you're not from the ATL, you can still wear one. That's right. And people can go, what is that all about? And you help can a kid go, go to college, right? Exactly. So, Because the mind is a terrible thing. Yeah. And if you go to the <laughs> ou-club-of-atlanta.square.site forward slash f forward slash shop, you can find their shirts there. But we're going to put um, uh, some stuff out as well on Twitter. So keep an eye and on Facebook. But <laughs> excuse me. Um what a great weekend it was, don't you think, Rob? Fantastic weekend. The University of Oklahoma uh, put a beat down on the Ohio State Cyclones for two quarters. The um, Iowa State Cyclones. Is that what I said or did I? No, you said Ohio State Cyclones. Did that's I? We've, <laughs> that's all right. Ohio I'm State have to, okay. Oof, I must have had a stroke earlier in the week. <laughs> I don't know. Um, for two quarters – Oklahoma manhandled them with the exception of one drive. What's going on, Rob? You know, Terry, I really felt good the whole entire game. Like we were just a fraction of away from just doing everything that we wanted to do. And I still feel like we did a lot of stuff that we wanted to do. I just think Iowa State played really good defense. They're they're a really good team. Contrary it's a good football to what team. What Sooner fans, you know, us included, but what Sooner fans sometimes think is it's Iowa State. Come on, you know. They can only be good every now and then. They get lucky, you know, twice against us here in recent history. But this team, you got to remember, what was a couple of weeks ago, just beat down West Virginia right. and Kansas State. Well, and West Virginia, I think, is a, a fairly good football team. Um, Kansas State, obviously, is suffering some – yeah. late season problems but uh they're still very good football teams but uh, Iowa State's tough they play good defense 
Um, you know, best running back in the country. Yeah. That we held to 79 yards, by the way. Yep. I think that the defense played out of their mind. Brock Purdy ran for his – he's probably still having nightmares. Yeah. He got – you know, I mean, he earned his Big 12 – you know, honors. I don't think so. <laughs> just by, you know, dealing with the Oklahoma defense. But here, here's the thing, though. I mean, we kept talking about it. You and I and Caleb did Saturday night. Caleb probably doesn't remember it, but um, Oklahoma was one of eleven on third downs. Yeah, not very good. Not very good. Um, Iowa State wasn't very good either. There were four of thirteen, but mm. better than Oklahoma. We had some dropsies though. Right. Yeah, four hundred and thirty-five yards to three hundred and ninety-two. Who won that, Rob? Who had the four hundred and who had the three hundred? Yeah, uh, we had the four hundred. Nope. Iowa State had four hundred and thirty-five yards of total offense. Wow. Oklahoma had three hundred and ninety-two. Well, you can do that if you get three turnovers. Yep. And if you win special teams, which we did. did. And Dre right. Brown is a freaking stud. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. If the Dallas Cowboys don't draft him just to have him in that stadium oh, <laughs> every week. Um, let's see. R- r- passing, Iowa State had 322 yards. Again, three interceptions, which were key. Hats off to the speed D for stepping up and doing what they're supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, you get him outside of the pocket running for his life, and he makes a bad throw. I mean, How scary do you think it is having uh, Perkins and, uh, and Perry on Winfrey? Perry on, Win- Perry on pretty- Winfrey om- could have almost broke his own back trying to tackle him in the end zone he's, twice. He's like a bear coming <laughs> through there. I'd be, I'd be like, oh, my God. Um, You know, 272 yards, 120 yards rushing for Oklahoma, 113. That's... That's the stat that bothers me. Which one? The the Oklahoma rushing 120 yards. 3.9 yards per rush. Is it a running back problem? Is it a offensive line problem? Is it a play calling problem? You know, um, the third down in, in what, the third quarter, third and one, and we throw a 15-yard. Yeah, I didn't like that play. I, I don't know with the running game, Terry, kind of looks like it's a combination of a couple of things. For starters, I think the offensive line is having some, let's just say, difficulty. Yeah. But number two, Ramondre does not look like he's running as hard as he normally did. Yeah. It's in, early in the game, it looked like he was going to the line and, oh, my gosh, <laughs> um, going to the line and kind of like halting, like waiting for something to happen instead of going in there and putting that big body in there. Well, I, I get that running backs do that. You know, they wait for the hole to open or the, you know, block to, to you know, happen or whatever. But he's – he's he needs to hit that hole hard and uh, you yeah. know, get what he gets because that's who he is. You're 249-pound bowling ball. Yeah. Right? You hit the hole. You knock somebody down. You go for another five, six, seven yards, whatever you've been doing. And then – there are times when that that guy's just going to miss, and you're going to go for thirty. You know, right. I don't know. Yeah, if everybody was wondering about the oh my gosh, that was uh, the Steelers just fumbled, been bo- bobbled the snap, and on their own twenty. Anyway, Steelers are playing the Bengals tonight, so I'm watching that. <clears throat> um, <laughs> here's the stats that I love: penalties. Oklahoma, who had the most penalties in the night? We definitely did. Eight for 60 yards. Uh, Iowa State, five for 42. And the big one was, I guess, that just sent Matt Campbell into <laughs> a raging fit was an offsides that was not offsides. He really got out to apologize to the ref. Yeah, that he was pointing to yeah. and spitting. You know, he wasn't spitting, but, you know, when you're yelling that violently. Yeah, he lost his mind there <laughs> over a good call. Yeah, because a number one, call. I saw a guy break it down on on line today. Number one, the ball didn't get snapped. Nope. Okay, if their center would snap the ball, he would. There, there, there would have remember, been offside. Remember the freeze play? Yeah. Terry, you know, you don't move the ball yeah. no matter what. That's what That's they were what they in. Had. Yeah. yeah. So he didn't. He he wasn't going to snap it. Then the next, you know, they kept it going, and the next guy jumped across. He didn't snap the ball. And Oklahoma, the player did not touch a player. Obviously, didn't they reviewed it, right? Or did they review it? No, they didn't review it. But therefore, it is not offsides. Plus, 
I didn't realize this, but in the video I saw, Matt Campbell, while that was happening, was running down the sidelines call, the second time before it happens, calling timeout. Oh. Okay. He was running down the sidelines calling timeout. But it was not offsides under, you know, in anybody's book. Not by the rule book. And, you know, they get, you know, they you know, on a fourth and one, they get like 20 yards. And then what happens? They throw <laughs> they, an interception. So. Yep. It didn't matter. That offsides didn't matter. So, um, but yeah, he lost his ever loving mind. Yeah, he, he did a little <laughs> bit of a freak out over there. I mean, I get it. They they want everything they can get, but he was he was kind of doing that all game. You know, they were wanting calls on every yeah. play. Come on, they were holding a lot. Oh yeah, and you didn't see Lincoln Riley out on the field crying like a little girl. <laughs> I'm just saying. No offense to women that cry, but or, you didn't see him doing it. Or men that cry. You, you don't care if you offended men who Real cried. men don't cry, Terry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look at the previous game. Uh, Oklahoma that we lost, 37-30. to 30. Um, uh, We were 4 of 13 on third downs. They were 6 of 10. Total yards, they had us by 3 yards. We outpassed them. They outrushed us. Um, but the big thing, here's the thing that bothers, bothers me is we were outscored in the second half again, the second half again, we were outscored 14 to three, seven to three in the fourth quarter. So do you think Riley's going into a vanilla package once we I get think, up? I think so. And here, you know, I put a, a, a tweet out on, on Sunday is here's the difference that we're not used to is we don't have an offense that can throw the knockout punch like we need to. And we don't, and we have a defense that can throw the knockout punch. Yep. This win goes on the defense's shoulders, plain and simple. They, yeah, they gave up 21 points. That's not bad. Seven points per quarter, except the first quarter. Oklahoma's offense had the chance to knock them out and go up by 10 with what? Four minutes left in the game mm -hmm. and game over. And we couldn't even punch it in. And we drove the ball down. We were in the red zone and couldn't get it in. Well, why do you think that is, though? What do you think it is? I think it's offensive line execution. I don't want to go into play calling because, I mean, it has to be to some extent. I mean, our offensive line, and that's the thing we need to do is get JY on here Um you know, and have him break down what's yeah. going on. Yeah, absolutely. Because if anybody knows, it's going to be yeah. him. You know, it, it's – I know Oklahoma runs some complicated blocking schemes. We've talked about that before. A lot of motion, a lot of pulling, a lot of misdirection. And, you know, maybe that – maybe these guys just aren't up to it yet. Maybe not. I know there was a lot of offensive line substitution in, during the game. So. Yeah. But – um, you know, overall, I mean, what else can we expect, you know, or what else could we want out of this team, um, at this point in this season is big 12 champions again, again and again and then know. again. Yeah. Six, six times. Yep. Um, here's what I would like if, if, since you're asking and it is Christmas time, I would like this team to play all four quarters. <laughs> like they played the first quarter <laughs> or at least. The second half like they play the first half. Yeah. Because just think about it. The first Iowa State game, the Kansas State game. I mean, we yeah. pretty much dominated those first two quarters of both of those games. Yeah. So. And and lost it in the fourth. I lost them in the fourth. Yep. So. Which we, we almost did. Did, did this Saturday, one too. Yeah. You know, and, and we will say that the rally patio was in effect on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, did, we did make a trip out there. Yeah, we made a trip out there towards the end now. I'm going to say I went out there to be alone. Oh, and I came following you out there? Well, I went to Caleb. We came out there staggering out there first. I don't know. I can't remember. No, I don't either. But, I, you know, Rob and I are a lot of like when we get – we're into the game when we're winning, but then when things start going wrong, we get quiet, right? Right. And we, we hold it in. <laughs> it yep. boils inside. So I went outside because I just – I needed to be alone. I didn't like what was happening. And uh, then the next thing I know, we have all the guys out there. And the daughter-in-law comes out just to watch us 
as she put it, watch us in our agony as <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> things. Yeah, she thought we were funny. Yeah, but uh, uh, the whole north side of Norman knew it when we intercepted the pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's for sure because we let out a scream of joy. High fives were among. So we did our part. We we put the rally patio into effect, full effect. Um, Even though I believe that's silly, right? But you were there. I was there. And guess what would have happened if you weren't there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I just, if I'm not doing like Caleb, he's the worst one, right? Oh, yeah, Caleb. Oh, y'all got to stand, y'all got to stand. I'm like, listen, I was standing last time and they scored on us. I'm sitting this time. Yeah, and you know me, I'm into that. I like it and everything. But towards the second half, my feet were hurting. I'm old <laughs> and fat, man. I was like, oh, my gosh, my feet are hurting. I sat down and I was like, stand up, Dad, stand up. It's like, my feet are hurting. Give me a minute. So I try and counteract that, you know. Yeah. Well, listen, we scored a while ago where I was sitting on the floor, so I'm going to go ahead and just stay here, okay? He was <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my God, y'all got to stand. What are y'all doing? You're going to jinx us. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's nothing we can do, but you go ahead. Yeah, and Caleb was raring to go to be on this week's podcast because he had things to say, um, you know, about the Big 12 all-conference team and, and Brock Purdy and – Iowa State, but uh, work had him, you know, with the holiday week and everything. He's backed up quite a bit. So, well, and we could probably say everything that he, you know, he's feeling inside. You know, how can we have the defense that we have and nobody gets first team and right? Yeah, just not not a good look for those coaches to not pick us and put us in. You know, at least Perkins. Well, okay, so I can understand Perkins. He was out half the year. But uh, but what he's done in that half a year, man, it's impressive. Yeah. But if you want to go ahead and punish him again, like you know he's already been punished once, but if you want to punish him again, go ahead. But how do you hold out uh, Benito? Right. Exactly. He had a fantastic. Who was year. just named to the uh, one of one of the All American teams? I'm hmm. Just saying. You know we they definitely deserve more than they got, and then they come out and said showed why, right? Yeah. 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 Did you see Benito's tweet after the game? No, I did not. Uh, I don't remember exactly what it said, but it 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 was uh, it was pretty good. You have to go look it up because I can't recall. <laughs> I just assume you've seen it. You're the one that sees all this stuff. I don't well, ever see nothing. Well, let me let me go. Yeah, look it up because uh, Nick. It was kind of you know. Bonit. Oh, search Nick Benito. On the Twitters? Yeah. Uh, I think it just said honorable mention or something like that. Yeah, he made uh, All-American defensive line first team PFF college football. Um, uh, I'm trying to find. I can't find his tweeter handle here. I will. I will, I promise. Anyway, yeah, it was pretty good. I thought, you know that's you know shoving it right in their face because they know that a couple of our guys should have been first teamers no doubt about it and you know if you want to hold us out we'll just come out and beat your pants off yeah <laughs> i can't find it uh, oh well i think i think it said honorable mention or a second team right or something you know some kind of snarky if you will that's kind of a chick word but you know what i mean what snarky snarky and is that S C H N A R K Y or is it is it just snarky? Because I kind of like snarky. Snarky. <laughs> I can't find his Twitter. I know I follow him, but I can't find it. So, um, yeah, that it was. But that's all done, you know. So we got the ring again. Well, hopefully, some of those guys will have something to prove, so they'll come back next year to prove that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not really holding out that much hope, Terry, because you and I both said it before. If somebody says, listen, it's a million bucks. Okay, see y'all. I'm out. Deuces. I mean, who turns that down? No. Nobody. Unless you're Kyler Murray. Well, yeah. (laughs) I mean, it kind of worked out for him, though, didn't it? (laughs) What did you hear about? He was uh, all pro. Oh, is that right? Yes, he was voted into all, all pro. But he can't play. He's too short to play pro football. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Go ahead and tell him that to his face. <laughs> so, 
Um, the college football ranks final or out from the CFP. Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, and Notre Dame. Any problem with that, Rob? Yeah, I got big problems with it. What problem do you have with with two undefeated teams and two one loss teams whose only loss was to them to each other? How can you be against one of these undefeated teams? Well, for starters, one of them hadn't played enough games. All right. How many times is the Big Ten gonna change their, you know, rules Rules. so they can get them in? I mean, literally, they all just come out and say, listen, we're going to do whatever it takes to get him in here. If we've got to change a rule, we're going to change a rule. Instead of acting like this was something they were thinking about. Yeah. So today, Terry, I know you and I talked about this earlier. They changed the whole 21-day quarantine rule. Yeah. Because if, if they stuck to that rule, half of those Ohio State guys would not be able to play in the game. Right. So they changed it today to guess how many days? How many? 17. <laughs> Why? Because we're 17 days away from the game. Because we're 18 <laughs> days away from that game. So don't act like you ain't doing this for that. You know, just come out and say, hey, we want our guys to play, so we're going to change our rule because right. we're idiots. I mean, I feel like they should add because we're idiots. You know, I, you? I, I, and, you, you know, let's be blunt. Let's be straight out. We're not saying that Oklahoma deserves to be in there more than Ohio State. That's not. That's not what I'm saying. Or it's not what we're saying. We're saying it. Uh, anybody other than Ohio State deserves to be in there. Right. Whether it be Texas A&M, or Cincinnati, Cincinnati, or Coastal Carolina. Uh, yeah, let's see. Florida can't. They got three losses. Georgia with two losses. Iowa State can't with three losses. Oh. Indiana, six and one. Coastal Carolina, 11 and 0. BYU, 10 and one. Put, put Cincinnati or BYU or Coastal, Coastal Carolina. Carolina. I don't care. But they have played enough games, Terry, because how many games did we play? Ten? Yep. That's four more games than Ohio State played. That's four games for them to, number one, lose a game, which you might say, well, they wouldn't. Well, that's what they were saying about us, too, so just shut right. your mouth. And two, wear and tear on the body. Somebody, could, If Justin Fields goes down, they're not winning six games. Right. So, or, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I just don't feel like they've paid the dues, okay? I know they're Ohio State. I know they're probably fairly good, but you know what? I don't think Northwestern's all that good. Northwestern give them every bit they wanted. Yeah. So I just I, – that's the that's my biggest problem. Notre Dame's not quite as big a problem because they did get beat by Clemson, and then they beat – you know, they beat Clemson and then got beat by Clemson. But the problem I have with that is when teams get beat late in the season, they're supposed to fall. Right. right, and they're not just yeah. like they didn't fall Florida after getting thumped. Yeah, and you know Florida's got three losses. Um, yeah, and they still yeah. got them in the top ten. Yeah, name me another team with three losses that's going to still be in the top ten. Come on, do I think they're good? Yes, but rules are rules. <laughs> you get three losses, you got to fall. Yeah, and you know let's just face it: this season is not fair to any college team, any college player, really forget about the fan bases as you know as much as we want to gripe and everything else it's not fair to these college kids that ohio state gets that opportunity that maybe in oklahoma a texas a&m the cincinnati georgia no not georgia uh iowa state even they don't get that opportunity to to have that spotlight Mm -hmm. and um Let's face it, everybody knows that the Big Ten came in and said, we can't lose this type of revenue this year. We're going to rush the season. So one of our teams can get into the playoffs. That's it. Yeah. I mean, where where is the rest of the Big Ten? Yeah, they're going to roll back Indiana. every rule. They're going to, they're gonna, you know, you, you can't make a rule and then say, oh, yeah, we're going to break this just so we can get in there. I mean, you can, I guess, because they did it. Yeah. But it just seems dirty. Yeah. Doesn't it? Slimy. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying Oklahoma wouldn't have done it, but it just doesn't feel right. Well, I think Oklahoma and the Big 12 and the SEC, they were transparent in it as we're going to do everything we can to play a football season, to protect the kids and play a football season. The Big 10 and the Pac-12 went, ooh, no, we're not playing. Thinking, I believe, that everybody else would follow suit. We can't play without them. It won't be fair. You know what? <laughs> Big 12 and the SEC and everybody else went, hold my beer. That's We're right. playing football. You guys can sit out if you want. 
And what the NCAA and the college football people should have done, the college should have said when they came in to start playing, they should have went, well, it's an intramural season for you because none of these games are going to count. You started too late. That's what they should have done. Yeah. That's what they should have done. I just feel like it's just dirty, trashy kind of, you know – and and it, and it really it's it's made uh, the Pac-12 completely irrelevant. Yeah, they had no you know no consideration for any of this at all. Of course, they all suck. But well, I don't know if they all suck. Yeah, they pretty much do. They pretty much all suck. Yeah, I mean they got in. Oregon got in six games, went four and two. SC got in six games, went five and one. And where was where was Southern California last week when the rankings were out, were they up in the top four or five? I no, I didn't mean, think about that. Hmm, Terry. Hmm. But I, I just feel like, you know, it should have been, it should have been A and M, or it should have been uh, Cincinnati. Although I feel like Cincinnati would just get embarrassed. Yeah. Um, because Tulsa had them on the ropes. Tulsa is a pretty good team. But come on, yeah, they are not elite players over there, and neither are they at Cincinnati Elite. They'll get thumped by you know big big boy football teams mm-hmm. who will just absolutely mow them down. And, no. and if and if that doesn't happen, I'll come back on here and say, you know what, to respect. Yeah. But if any if history has told us anything, if if you know Cincinnati had made the playoff, they would have played Alabama. They would have. I mean, Alabama would have played their second team and still run rule them. And yeah. I know there's no run rule, but they would have been wishing there would have been. Did you know bowl season has already started? Yeah, started today, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who played today? The Myrtle Beach Bowl. Myrtle Beach Bowl. Appalachian State and North Texas. App State won 56-28. Wow. Let's run down Happy the old. Happy State. Let's run down the old bowl picture here. All right. December 22nd, tomorrow. Holy cow, these guys just played Saturday. Oh, by the way, tomorrow is my elder son's birthday. Just want to wish him a happy birthday. Does he listen to the podcast? Uh, I don't know. (laughs) He might. (laughs) Turns 30 tomorrow. 30. You're getting old, man. So I had him when I was six. So, yep, you're right. I'm I'm pushing 40. Yeah. Pushing 40. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. Idaho Potato Bowl which is the butthole of all bowl games, oh. in my opinion. Yeah, hey, come, we'll give you some potatoes. In Boise, Idaho, December 22nd. Is that two, on the blue field? Yeah. Mm. yeah uh, Tulane versus Nevada. How much you want to bet it doesn't get over 32 degrees tomorrow for <laughs> I'm still going to watch it, though, Terry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what time does that come on? <laughs> 3.30 p.m. Yeah, I'm watching that. Also at 7 p.m., the nightcap, or is that the night? Yeah, the nightcap, the Boca Raton Bowl. UCF and BYU, that ought to be a pretty good one. I watched that one too. Uh, the New Orleans Bowl. Notice I said that in the true. You, you, Cajun yeah, you nailed it. December nailed it. 23rd, uh, Louisiana Tech and Georgia Southern. Yeah, I'm going to watch that too. Uh, December 23rd, the Montgomery Bowl in montgomery alabama boy they're not getting very fancy with these names anymore are they uh memphis at uh versus fau yeah the new mexico bowl on december 24th fourth houston versus hawaii man i feel sorry for hawaii you got to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico to play your bowl game. And, <laughs> well, listen. And you live in Hawaii? <laughs> Anywhere they go, it's a downer, right? That's <laughs> true. We got to leave Hawaii and go to, you know, Norman, Oklahoma. Oh, my gosh. Uh, let's see. The Camellia Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama. Another one in Montgomery, Alabama? Yeah. Man, they got one on Christmas Day. Hmm. Uh, Christmas, the 23rd. And, man, Montgomery. Ooh, wow, what a hit that was. You need to see that replay if you uh, get yeah. the opportunity. I'll be looking. I'm kind of looking up with one eye right now. Um, the Cure Bowl in Orlando, Florida, the 26th. Coastal Carolina versus Liberty. How much you want to bet? That's a beat down. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Liberty's pretty good. <laughs> okay, let me see what I, happened here. We're watching. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I have not watched Coastal Carolina play one game this year. Not one. Oof. Yeah, he did get lit yeah, up. Yeah, he got lit up. Oh, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. No, I got knocked about three yards backwards. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, December 26th, the Gasparilla Bowl. Gasparilla? G-A-S-P-A-R-I-L-I-L-L-A. Okay. Gasparilla. Southern Car- South Carolina versus UAB. That game is in Tampa. December 26th, the, man, they are packing these things in. <laughs> the first responder bowl in Dallas, Texas, Louisiana versus U- University of Texas, San Antonio. You know, we're pretty blessed to be Sooners because we don't have to play in the Gasper whatever bowl. <laughs> Gasparilla. Is that like a sarsaparilla that gives you the farts? <laughs> I don't know, but the uh, Holiday Hoobie Wuddy Bowl, I don't want to play in that. You know? Uh, the Lending Tree Bowl in Mobile, Alabama, Western Kentucky, and Georgia State. Hmm. The yeah. Cheese It Bowl on December 29th. Guess who's playing in the Cheese It Bowl? Let me guess. I have no clue. Miami of Florida. Oh, and Oakstank. And Oaky Stank. Nice. Who's going to win that game? Probably Miami. <laughs> the Cheese It Bowl. Do you think they get the little kitty packs of the cheez it's and they're <laughs> there you go uh i think uh half of the uh oklahoma state cowboys have decided not to play in that game <laughs> chubba hubba hey chubba, chubba but man chubba if, if you get you know a big old package of cheez it's with it why wouldn't you play well, yeah you gotta Come go on. for the cheez it's have you t- have you tasted the extra cheesy ones because they're pretty oh, good yeah, they're pretty good yeah not bad uh the alamo bowl it's an old Big 12 matchup, Texas versus Colorado on December 29th. Hmm, yeah, I'll watch that. <laughs> December 30th, Duke's Mayo Bowl. Who? Duke's Mayo. I'm guessing that's Duke's Mayonnaise. Are you it's, speaking English? It's M-A-Y-O in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh. Uh, Wake Forest versus Wisconsin. Wow, that's a bad matchup. For yeah. Wake, isn't it? Um, the Music City Bowl, Iowa versus Missouri on the 30th. Um, the Armed Forces down in Fort Worth, Texas, Mississippi State versus Tulsa. That'll be a good one. Yeah. December hey, 31st. Tulsa, Tulsa's playing some good football right now. The Arizona Bowl in Tucson, Arizona is Ball State and San Jose State. Tucson. Um, the Liberty Bowl. That's is, in Memphis, right? That's in Memphis, Tennessee. No, no, no. Not Memphis, Tennessee. I'm reading it off the screen, Rob. It's in Memphis, Tennessee? That's what it says. Okay. Um, It is West Virginia, and it was supposed to be who? Tennessee. Tennessee opted out. People were ticked off because Army didn't get a bowl bid. Guess who's playing in it now? Nice, Army. Yeah, Army. Very good. <laughs> West Virginia and Army. I like it. West Virginia better hold on. <laughs> Texas Bowl on December 31st in Houston, Texas. TCU and Arkansas. Hmm. January 1st, the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. Auburn versus Northwestern. The Gator Bowl, Gator Bowl in Jacksonville on January 2nd. It's Kentucky and NC State. January 2nd, the Outback Bowl in Wait, Tampa. Wait, didn't you miss one on December 30th? I haven't got to them yet, Rob. Oh. Ole Miss versus Indiana, the Outback Bowl. Okay, the New Year's Six Bowl games, the Big Daddy Bowl games. Why in the world did Oklahoma get the what? Is that the Wednesday night game? Is that what it is? December? Yeah, December 30th at 8 p.m., Oklahoma versus the Florida Gators. January 1st at 1230, the Peach Bowl, Cincinnati versus Georgia. Oklahoma-Florida is a better matchup than that. Why would – ugh. January 2nd, the Fiesta Bowl, Oregon versus Iowa State. That'll be a good game. I think so, too. I hope Iowa State just, just throttles them. Yeah. I can't oh, stand yeah. the Pac-12 anymore. Yeah, I can't either. The Orangi Bowl, January 2nd, uh, Texas A&M and North Carolina. And, Come on, North Carolina. Uh, Rose Bowl in Arlington, Texas. <laughs> 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 That's what you get, Rose Bowl. That's what you get. California, mm-hmm. uh, Alabama versus Notre Dame. You know Jerry is raking in the bucks this year. Well, he is. Of course, uh, you know, quarter of the quarter of the fans, so probably not. But yeah, but better. I mean, I I'm sure that rent's got to be high. Yeah, I'm sure he ain't doing it for free. Mm-hmm. And it ain't he ain't doing it for you know. I can just cut even. <laughs> like I don't know what cut even means. 
Sugar Bowl in New Orleans, um, Clemson versus Ohio State, and then January 11th is the national championship game. Who's going to be in it, Rob? I don't think there's any doubt it's going to be Alabama-Clemson, but, you know, stranger things have happened, right? Yeah. I mean, I think Notre Dame's a pretty good football team. Honestly, I don't know how good Ohio State is because, really, I don't don't get any respect for Northwestern. And Northwestern was handling them all game, and Ohio State came back and won it in the fourth quarter. So, that's it's also the widest spread, too, isn't it? I don't know what the spread is. I don't have that 17 and a half. Mm, man. 17 and a half. Jeez. So. You happy with the Cotton Bowl this year? I think so. Uh, losing two games. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're, I mean, uh, maybe the helmet sticker got us there. What do you think? Yeah, I think we played better in the back end. Uh, which, in that par for the course with Lincoln Riley, we yeah. lose a game we're not supposed to. And this year we lost two we weren't supposed to. And yeah. Backdoored it in. Um, it, you know, and I've seen people put some tweets out and stuff. I, I got a question. And to all of our followers out there, and this is a, a good description. Everybody's talking about, you know, for Oklahoma being in a rebuilding year, this was pretty good year. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think so. Why do we have rebuilding years in Alabama and Clemson? Have reloading years? Aren't. Why, why are we calling it a, 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 you know, rebuilding year? What are we rebuilding? Right. We've had over the last three and four years, we've had top 10, top five recruiting classes. What the heck are we rebuilding? Well, when you lose, you know, a Jalen Hurts and you, when you lose a Kyler Murray and a Baker Mayfield, you feel like you got to go into a rebuilding mode because those are Heisman type. To a to a tugboat of lover. I know, but and the where guy is that Alabama got in there this is year? Fantastic, and it, you know what? It, those skilled players. It comes down to can did they have time to, you know, use that skill? No, because if your quarterback's always on the run, they don't. <laughs> so. Well, here's the thing. I've said it uh, back when Lincoln, we, we started this podcast and Lincoln had the job and everything we were looking at. Um, the honeymoon's over in my opinion. I mean, it, you know, every, every year it's been, boy, you wait till next year. We got all these guys coming back and da, 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 da. Baker's going to have a second year, you know, da, you know, well, now we got Kyler and look at all his weapons. Well, now what are we going to, Oh, wait, now we got Jalen hurts. Holy cow. And, and then it's like we got the number one recruit quarterback and all these ride receivers. So wait a minute. Let me let me see if I can understand what you're saying. I'm upset that we're in a rebuilding year. I'm upset that we aren't more <laughs> dominant than what we are. So and the I have last right. four years we've had the number one offense in the nation. And the worst defense <laughs> in the history of the wait, world. Wait, I'm not done. And six back to back Big Twelve championships. Five until this year. So that's not enough for you. Okay. Okay. Do we want to go back to 2000 <laughs> and see who's won national championships? Oh, no. I I totally, you're going to name Alabama and most of the SEC. No, hold on here. Uh, I'm just saying we're pretty good, but I agree. We got to, in this Oklahoma, we got to have some national championships. Right? Yeah, I'm I'm tired I'm tired of it. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. Where is Wikipedia at cuz uh, it's easier to read. Okay. Since 2000. You can't just name those off the top of your head. Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> okay. Doo, doo, doo. Can you name the team that won 2001? 2000, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Okay, keep these on your fingers. Okay. Okay. 2001, Miami of Florida. 2002, Ohio State. 2003, LSU. We, we should have been us, but. 2004, nobody. Right? <laughs> USC no, no, vacated. Right. No, nobody. Don't even say yeah. their name. 2005, Texas. Lucky. 2006, Florida. 
Should have been us. 2007, LSU. Should have been us. 2008, Florida. Should have been us. <laughs> 2009, Alabama. 2010, Auburn. 2011, Alabama. 2012, Alabama. 2013, Florida State. 14, Ohio State. 15, Alabama. 16, Clemson. 17, Alabama. 18, Clemson. 19, LSU. LSU has had more national championships than Oklahoma has since 2000. Hmm. Yep. Well, Terry, I mean. Why? Why? I mean, we're in the mix. That's one thing I can say. We have been in the mix since 2000. Not very many other schools can say that. Would you just say we're not at that level? Have we had some bad I'm luck? Saying we're not at that level, Rob. I'm saying I'm tired of being second best. I know. Well, here's the thing. You know, in what, 03 when we played LSU, our quarterback was hurt. And, I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses. Then what was that if it wasn't an excuse? It was an excuse, <laughs> but it's a legitimate excuse. <laughs> I'm just saying, we've been there. We've been there. You know, yeah, we don't have one, but a whole lot of teams can't can't say, hey, we were there and we were fighting for yeah. it. So. LSU has three national championships since 2000. That. That kind of that kind of hurts. Yeah, Nick Saban's got one of them. Old Lester has one of them. Less smiles. Yeah, and Ed or or Oregon, Orgeron. I mean, I I'm just saying that. Oops, sorry about that. That was the squeaking of my mm-hmm. mic stand. Is in my opinion, Oklahoma is never in a rebuild. Should never be in a rebuilding. Right. Mode. This wasn't a rebuilding year. Well, you know, one good thing is, starting next year, <laughs> <laughs> we're reloading. You know, we we've had, you know, who, whoever's blame we want to point, we had the best offense surrounded. You know, the best offense in the history of the world, surrounded by the worst defense in the history of middle school football. For crying out loud! I mean, how many teams have had have had the best offense? to go with the worst defense because statistically One. we were the worst defense <laughs> and the best offense so i mean yeah it kind of sucks but yeah i'm just you know it, it's time for oklahoma um to do what it has to do to start putting its name on some national championship trophies it's just that simple well yeah we need the the national championship trophy to go behind all those Big 12 trophies we got. Yeah. I mean, well, you remember. Oh, never mind. I don't even want to get into it. I'm making myself angry. My blood pressure is going up. <laughs> the Florida Gators. No, wait. Let's go back just a little. Oh, bit. God. Because we can blame a little bit of it on the conference. Can we not? The Big 12 conference is just bad. Or it was. Or it has been. So the defenses had to adjust for the offenses that were here because there were good offenses. Remember, Texas yeah. Tech was yeah. lighting people up, but nobody could play any defense. And we fell into that same rhythm, if you will, and it just just didn't work out. Belt defenses to try to stop. That's right. Yeah. So we're changing that around, getting things caught back up. We're going to be there, Terry. We're going to have – a national title next year, maybe the one after that, and maybe two or three after that in a row, then we won't be having this discussion, right? I hope so. Yeah. How the hell are we behind 10 to nothing? Um, They scored a touchdown and a field goal. <laughs> you know, we're in the <laughs> playoffs, the and you know me. I mean, but now we're playing for the, the t- you know, the, our division title. We need to get this win under our belt. Okay, we've seen that fumble twice. Now, have they times. lost two straight or is it yeah, three? Yeah, two straight. Two straight. So, this would be the third one because uh, Cincinnati is lighting them up. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Florida Gators in the 2020 Cotton Bowl. You like this matchup? The more I think about it, yeah, because I don't think. <sighs> I don't think They gave Florida, Alabama everything they wanted. They gave Alabama everything they wanted to in – the fourth quarter, I think it was. Let me pull it up here. Yeah, they 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 did have a good fourth quarter, no doubt about that. 
I think Alabama scored 21 points in the second quarter. I think Trask, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the uh, college football. Okay, and he's good. They got some. They got some good athletes. Defense is pretty strong. It's going to be a good game, I think. Hopefully, we come and play four full quarters. <laughs> and if we do, I think we'll beat them. Yeah. Uh, see, they beat Ole Miss 51-35, beat South Carolina 38-24, lost to Texas A&M on October 10th, 41-38. The LSU game was postponed. Uh, beat Missouri 41-17, beat Georgia 44-28. to 28. Um beat Arkansas 63 to 35, beat Vanderbilt 38-17, Kentucky 34-10, Tennessee 31-19, lost to LSU 37 to 34, and lost to Alabama in the title game 52 to 46. Man, they play defense in the SEC, don't <laughs> right? <they? laughs> uh, Florida can score some points, no doubt about that. Florida can score. Yeah. Um you know, honestly, I don't know a whole lot about um, Florida, and um, you know what we can look for. Haven't had much time to look it up, but I think next week before the game, we'll have a nice little podcast preview in the Florida Gators. Tim Tebow's alma mater. Yep. Heisman Trophy winner, greatest college quarterback to ever play the game, Tim Tebow. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Better than Baker? <laughs> well, according to a lot of people. That's first down. And he's turning around and he's running. Let him keep going. No, he wasn't down. Hmm, I can't believe you just said Team Tebow was better than Baker. Yeah. Well, you know, you said Kyler Murray and everybody else who played quarterback <laughs> at OU was better than him. Uh, and now it's looking like Jalen Hurts might be better than him. <laughs> oh, mm. uh, at Big Rob, he's pretty good, huh? Yeah. So last week we had uh, Kyler Baker matchup. Which did was you cool. see, did you see that picture of uh, uh, Jalen and uh, Kyler Kyler after the game? Yeah. Jalen looked like somebody just peed in his post toasties. <laughs> he looked like somebody farted. Right, Arizona right. won that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, Ooh that's pass interference. Pass interference. Um, Throw the flag. But the week Is there before, no flag? there was Kyler, Baker, Zeus, Mark Andrews. Yeah. Right? That was a cool picture. And then this week, we got Jalen and Kyler. That was a pretty cool picture. So, I think it's really cool that – and and maybe they're all doing it, Terry, from other schools. I don't, I don't know that because I don't see them. I see the OU ones. So you think all the other college kids that went to school like Kyler and Baker, you know, I think they, they do. To, you think they do? Yeah. Okay. I don't think other schools market it as well um, as Oklahoma does. You know what I mean? Well, they're oh, doing a good job because yeah. I think it's really cool, and it's really cool to hear. Yeah, the, both these quarterbacks were from Oklahoma. You know. Yeah. So that that makes me feel pretty good about my team, and by my team I mean Oklahoma. <laughs> Just in case, you know, you aren't following that. Let's see here. The Pro Bowl. And then, you know, obviously today, um, Mixon's in there. <laughs> what, Gresham? No, Gresham's still hurting me. I don't I don't know. Is he even in playing? Uh, I think but he's hurt. It, but him and Samaje, you know, obviously in the same backfield. And then uh, – well, no, Landry's gone from Pittsburgh, isn't he? So I don't know who. Does Pittsburgh have any Sooners? That's probably why they lost two in a row. They don't have any Sooners. No, nothing? I'm looking at the Pro Bowl stuff. Hmm. Headlines. But it turns out that uh, Kyler's going to be really good. Am I right? Yep. And um, uh, Arizona's going to give him a great big old contract when he's ready for it. Yeah, Kyler Murray was one of three quarterbacks for the NFC. Uh, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, and Aaron Rodgers. Pretty good company. And I guess you were right. He is better than Baker, like you were saying last year. Well, I told you. I mean, Apparently, you just got to listen to me. So is Deshaun Watson and Josh Allen. 
Mm-hmm. And Patrick Mahomes. Well, yeah. Patrick Mahomes is pretty <laughs> damn good, isn't he? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. Kyler's got some athletes around him. Yeah. And he definitely does. So that'll help a quarterback out. How long? Yeah, and that guy right there, because we're watching a commercial with Fitzgerald. Fitzpat, is it Fitzgerald? Yeah. Um, how long has that guy been playing? Like eighty years. Yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> guy's been in the NFL forever. Uh huh. But um. Anyway, what else, Rob? Anything else we want to touch base, or do we want to save it all up? How you played golf today? I did. We play played today. golf yesterday. It's the first time you come off the. Uh, Injured reserve. Yeah, back to back days. Had had a pretty good day out there today. Played with my buddy John. Since I guess you're gonna work. Yeah. I mean, you people with jobs, I don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Boy, today a I went out, day. went outside a couple times. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to call in so sick now. Nice. It was so a nice. perfect day for golf. Yeah, I hit I had a lot of good balls today. Although I wasn't hitting the draw with you know some of my longer irons, I normally put a pretty nice little draw on there. So I. On that par five, uh, what number five? Mm-hmm. Uh, bombed a drive, laid up, <laughs> 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 not intentionally, but I did. It was a good layup, and so uh, it was still a seven iron because you know it's pretty long, pretty long hole. And uh, I tried to draw it in there, did not draw, so I missed the green, but almost chipped it in the hole. So that was pretty cool. Cool. I hate you. Something's playing. Pull your headphones off. Something's, something's on. Anyway. Oh, I know what that is. It's one of these commercials one on the old inter, you know, on the yeah. interwebs. So, so yeah. Like, yeah, good day on the golf course, Terry. Of course, I don't have a job, so. No. Well, Rob has uh, created a new golf grip. We, we're calling it the baseball teacup grip. Teacup. <laughs> 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 Which watch for the videos coming out soon to for Rob to demonstrate the. Uh, it is awkward. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm gonna tell you something. I am not. I'm not hitting the duck hook, and I am bombing. <laughs> I think. The, well, it's the thing is, is you, you're like the other day when you were hitting them well. It's weird that sometimes when you don't try to hit the ball hard, it just goes a mile. I've done that. I don't know why I don't do it all. I think because when you do it enough, it starts not going far. Yeah. And when you when you're when you get the duck hook coming in, or things aren't going right, and you just just quit trying to kill the ball, just hit it, and then it starts going far, and you do that for a while, and then I, I don't know. Golf is a, that fickle. It is game that that par five wound up being about a three hundred forty five yard drive. <laughs> yeah. For a you know old dude like me that's you know pushing forty, it's not bad. <laughs> not bad. And, um, you know, we still have, uh, uh, cut out Lisa, you know, held captive. Are we going to, are we going to, uh, pimp her out or well, nobody, uh, nobody hits up did they? Uh, there are a few people ask how they could get in on the, uh, you know, a night with cut out Lisa. I seen what she was doing with David there. That yeah. Was naughty Lisa. <laughs> I can't even believe you. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Yeah. So. And then, you know, I, I try to take a nap after the game and. I got, you know, cut out <laughs> Lisa and kids and everybody trying to get pictures with me, right? While I'm napping, so but uh, we we may come up with you know a day with cut out Lisa, you know. I'm if pretty sure a, she's gonna want cut out Lisa pretty quick. <laughs> if there's a if there's a dollar to be made, you know, hey, yeah. I think we ought to make the dollar bill, Rob. Well, if we do, we're gonna have to get one of those hats, you know, with the big long feather. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> purple purple hat Mm -hmm. purple suede hat but um anyway guys that's the podcast for this week uh join us next week we'll we'll take a look at the cotton bowl and the florida gators and what we expect out of that game that's podcast appreciate it folks retweet hey they need to retweet our deal oh yeah retweet retweet it find go find it um you know uh, unhitch the wagons for your chance to win that book Bag up, bag up, bag up, Terry. Put it in reverse, Terry. Put it in reverse. Oh, Lord, Lord, Jesus. What the, what, what you doing, Terry? Ah!